We are here with our state attorney, Lawson Lamar, and um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got to um, the job you have today? How, how did you end up state attorney? What's, what's your history? I started prosecuting some cases when I was an officer in Vietnam, and I came back here and I wanted to do one thing, and that is to be an assistant state attorney in the Ninth Circuit. I became a trial lawyer. I worked my way up through the chair as bureau chief. I became the chief assistant state attorney, and there was some corruption at the sheriff's office. So I needed to run for sheriff. I became sheriff for eight years. For seven of those years, we led the state of Florida in crime reduction by FBI statistics. I'm proud of that. I came back when the old state attorney retired. I've been state attorney ever since. I founded the MBI. The MBI is the best, oldest strike force in America that works organized crime and vice and a lot of narcotics cases. So we've been active. I currently have a $24.5 million budget, 365 employees, 145 lawyers, and believe it or not, do the math, we take in 88,500 cases a year and we process, process those very efficiently, seeking justice with 145 lawyers. It's a major management job. Over the years, I've commanded as many as 1,800 people. This is not a job for an amateur. It takes years to learn how to lead the budget, the personnel, and all the issues. I am a, an accomplished trial lawyer. I did murder trials for quite a while. And what I do is I lead all the murder cases myself personally, and I know how to organize so that we are able to, with justice and fairness and equal treatment, handle 88,500 criminal cases a year. We're proud of that. We send more felons to prison from Orange Osceola than Miami does, and they have over twice as many lawyers as I do. We have the second highest wins at trial of any state attorney's office in Florida because we'll try the really hard cases. And on the really hard end, we do lose about half of them. But the half that we try and win would not be won if we were less courageous. So if you don't swing at a fast pitch, you'll never hit a fast pitch. And just because a defendant is good at hiding evidence doesn't mean we should back off the case because it might hurt our averages. We're into total convictions because total convictions slam prison jail cells. Conviction averages and rates have never convicted anybody. Now, several years ago, when you were um, at the state attorney's office, there was um, there was a, an, an open election for the Orange County Sheriff's position, and you were asked to run for that. What was going on at that time, and why were you running? The chief deputy of the sheriff's office had, had just been sent to prison for stealing. There was corruption in this area in the department. I don't think the sheriff himself was corrupt. I know he couldn't control it. There were places here, uh, places with organized prostitution, with young women uh, who were narcotics addicted and kept there by the pimps. Some were actually uh, confined by the pimps, beaten if they tried to get away. They were allowed to operate wide open and when my MBI tried to raid them, the phone would go off before my raiders got there. So I was asked by law enforcement leaders to run for sheriff to go and clean the place up. I did, we won, we cleaned it up. And we haven't had corruption like that in Orange County, Florida ever since then. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the deputy sheriffs and that team that worked for me because, again, we were able to lead the state of Florida in crime reduction for seven consecutive years. Um, what, when, you, when you were elected sheriff, what exactly did you do within the office to help, help clean everything up? I brought in some really good administrators. I found ways to get rid of a few people that I didn't have confidence in. And believe it or not, after we did that for the first year, the phones didn't go off in the places to be raided. Uh, one time I had done a wiretap on a Gambino associate, and the day I put it on, the associate changed his phone number. That was absolute proof of corruption. We didn't have any security or intelligence leaks after that, so I know that what we did worked. 